How y'all doing today? Are you well? Hey, it's so good to see you. I was told there would be people here today that love Jesus. Is that true? Is that true? I only needed three. All right, I'm in the right place. Um, you would be here on the first Sunday of the year if you love Jesus. You have perfect church attendance. I'm really impressed. Uh, but hey, it's so good to see you guys today. I'm supposed to preach a short message, which is going to be very hard for me. Um, if you know me, you know that that's very hard for me. But also because I have something that's really burning on my heart. I've been thinking all morning long, like I need to do a part two next week um, with what I'm going to be talking about today. But the reason I'm preaching a shorter message is because we have a lot more worship to do. Amen. Uh, there is no greater theme, there's no greater agenda than we could be doing today than just to pause and worship the Lord. In fact, your relationship with God this year, I think it has less to do with what you're going to do for God, has more to do with the praise that you're going to give God. It's less to do with your performance for him, more to do with your presence with him, because that's what he wants. He just wants you. You're the prize. <laughs> He's actually just in love with you. What well, he wants you, when we just pause and we stop, we stop thinking and worrying and working and grinding and making it happen. We just pause just to be with him. That's what he wants. That's what moves his heart. He wants intimacy with you. God is not in love with what you do. God's in love with you. And that's a really important thing to remember as we head into a new year. Because as a believer, as I head into a new year, I begin to think about all the things that God needs me to do this year. And all the things God needs me to fix this year. And all the chapters God needs me to read this year. And all the biblical knowledge God needs me to gain this year. By the way, biblical knowledge is only helpful when it fuels your intimacy with Jesus. If not, it's just going to fuel your pride. <laughs> The Bible says that knowledge puffs up, and so even when you gain it, even in Scripture, it either makes your heart harder or softer. What's the difference? Intimacy with Jesus. <laughs> are, are you reading to know more stuff or more about him? That's all he wants from you this year. He just wants you. He wants to connect with you. And we see this all through Scripture, but maybe one of my favorite examples is in Luke chapter 10. There's a story of Mary and Martha. The Bible tells a story that Jesus goes to uh, his friend's house just to hang, just to chill, just to sit on the couch. And this is God, by the way, right? Like, he's got things to do. Like, Jesus, don't you have more important things to do than sit on the couch? Jesus like, no, that's what I want to do. He came to connect. And even though that's true, God is sitting on their couch. The Savior is sitting on their couch just wanting to hang. The Bible says that these two sisters have two very different responses to Jesus. Of course, Mary, the first one, the Bible says that she hung, or she was hanging. You thought I was kidding with the word hang. She was hanging, the Bible says, she was hanging on every last word that Jesus said. When I grew up, I want to be like Mary, who doesn't seem to find anything better than, to do than just to sit on Jesus' couch and hang with him. And I pray that that would be what it's like for you today, that it's like I'm not even here on stage with a microphone and you're listening to me, but rather you're hanging on every word that Jesus is saying. I would hate for you to miss that. Of course, though, there's the other example of Martha. The Bible says that Martha's busy. Martha is pulled away. She's pulled away from the couch. She's pulled away from hanging. She's pulled away from Jesus by all that she had to do. And this is like the easy moment as a Christian where we can ridicule Martha and tear her apart and cancel Martha. Martha, what are you doing? Jesus is sitting on your couch. You're just going to do the dishes? Really? And we might do that. Some of us would do that. We probably shouldn't do that because we do that, right? I'm not going to tear apart Martha today because I am Martha most of the time. Jesus sitting on my couch. I'm like, Jesus, I don't have time to chill on the couch. I got to write a sermon which is scary, by the way, right? Hopefully I don't say that. Um, Jesus, I gotta go to work. I gotta put in extra hours, right? I gotta provide. Jesus is sitting on the couch like, I'll provide. Jesus, I don't have time to hang. I gotta do the dishes. I gotta clean my house because my kids jack it up every day. And so instead of sitting down and resting, I gotta clean their room for the third time so I can find a little bit of peace. Jesus on the couch like, I'll give you peace. I am peace. Jesus, I got to go to the gym so I can get in better shape so more people will love me. Jesus is like, I love you. <laughs> and by the way, that's all hard to receive when you're Martha because Martha believes that the only way to please her God is to never stop and do more and accomplish more and achieve more, right? I don't have time to rest. Rest is for sinners, you know what I mean? This is San Diego. I can't be content. Contentment is for the weak who lack ambition. I need to get up and go harder and achieve more. Even if I'm feeling weak or empty or inadequate, I will get up and I will push harder, right? And this is what it's like. And this is what it's like at New Year's, by the way. And we get like a thousand different messages like that on the podcasts and the books and the New Year's resolutions and the goals and even the reading plans. And it's all saying the same message to you. Get off the couch. You need to get up and you need to leave the couch, right? If you don't have what you want in life, you better get up and go get it. If you're not fulfilled in life, you better get up and work for it. 
right? Dig deeper, work harder, you got it, ah, right? Like that's the message on YouTube. And you have these people on YouTube who yell at you. And sometimes these people on YouTube who yell at you, their name starts with the word pastor. Because even self-help has gotten in the church. <laughs> self-help where I get up and I become God and I go make it happen. It's people yelling at us like, you need to get off the couch. You want me to get off the couch? Isn't Jesus on the couch? And this is the moment in the message when I need a couch, right? Like twice a year I need a prop and I want a couch and I don't have one. Maybe next week we'll have a couch on stage. I'm going to pray about it, all right? Is it Jesus? You want me to get off the couch? Are you sure? Jesus is on the couch. Yeah, you need to go get you some. If you want peace, you need to go find you some peace. If you want love, you better get up and work for it. And it's no wonder why people are leaving church and not walking with Jesus anymore. Because that's not like an encouraging message. That's not good news. That's not the gospel. That's not the actual gospel. That's the American gospel. You want me to get up, become God, and go figure it out, and then give God the credit? That makes no sense. So you want me to go find peace? Is that what you're saying? Yes, go find peace for you and Jesus, because Jesus is worried. He's worried about the White House and the economy and the things going on in your life. He's worried. Go find you some peace and then share it with Jesus. And that's what God needs you to do this year. And that's not good news. And that's not like the gospel. Jesus is sitting. You don't need to leave the couch. Peace is sitting on the couch. You don't need to go find love. You can be loved on Jesus' couch. Now, it's important to clarify that I'm not saying that if you follow Jesus, you should become lazy, right? Some of you are like, I love this message, right? I knew I could retire at 27. Follow Jesus. That's not what I'm saying. Because that's not what happens. The longer you sit on Jesus' couch spiritually, eventually, physically, you will get up. Physically, you will get up and you will go to work and you'll be the greatest worker at your work. Because no longer are you showing up to grind and get yours, but you're going to show up and become a servant. And you're going to give yourself away. And you're going to care about other people because Jesus already took care of you. Eventually, if you sit on Jesus' couch long enough, you're going to get up physically and you're going to go to your family and you're going to be the best member in your family. Because no longer are you showing up thinking, what can I get from my family? You're thinking, what can I give to my family? Because all the love, affection, and care you needed, you got on Jesus' couch. <laughs> and now you get to show up amongst people and you get to just give your life away. You get to be generous, right? A lot of times we're greedy with what we have, with our attention, our care, our talent, our resources. Greed is a side effect when we don't sit on Jesus' couch long enough and get what we need. We show up greedy. No, now I get to show up and <laughs> I'm taken care of, man. I get to give my life away because I never left the couch, right? And there's a lot more there, but I got to leave the couch because we got more worship songs to play. Um, but what's the whole point? Why'd I say all that? The whole point of that is this. This is what Jesus wants from you this year. He just wants you. He just wants to sit on the couch with you all year long. That's what he wants from you. He wants presence. He wants intimacy. That's what God wants from you. My question is, what do you want from God? And I'll ask it like this. Do you want to move God's hands or do you want to move God's heart? Do you want to move his hands or his heart? So often as a believer, I just want to move God's hands. <laughs> I want to move his hand of blessing. I want to move his hand of favor. I want him to go get all the things that I want, bring them back, and give them to me. Sometimes I treat God like a genie, especially in the new year with all my goals and stuff. God's here to give me everything I want and everything that I desire. But what if this year was different? What if this year you didn't want God's stuff, you just wanted God? What if this year you realized, I'm not the Lord, he is. And so I'm not here to say, God, here's what you can do to please me, but God, what can I do to please you? <laughs> I think it's a genuine Christian's goal in 2024, not to try to move God's hands, but to say, I want my life, my soul, my lifestyle to move the heart of God. Because I just want him, right? How do we move God's heart? Well, a humble heart moves God's heart. A humble heart. God says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he says, Israel, I'll, I'll heal your land if you first humble yourself. Seven times in the New Testament, God says, I exalt the humble, but I humble the exalted. You get to pick which one you are. Humility is a big deal to God. My worry is we're losing our ability to be humble because we don't see it very often. Most of our leaders and politicians and celebrities are kind of in it for themselves a lot of the time. They're kind of promoting themselves. And sometimes we see that and we think that's humility and it's not, it's not moving God's heart. Humility looks like not promoting yourself and not trying to make yourself seem bigger than your neighbor or bigger than your friend or that person in your family. It's lowering yourself, it's getting low, why? Because God speaks in low places. <laughs> That's what moves his heart. Maybe humility for you this year is uh, apologizing to somebody. 
Maybe there's somebody right now you're not on speaking terms. God wants you to reach out first. God wants you to heal that relationship. He wants you to restore and forgive and reach out. Maybe that's what humility looks like for you. Humility looks like prayer. I think prayer is the ultimate humble test. Whether or not you take real time out of your schedule to pray says a lot about you. Because we're freaks about our schedule, right? I gotta be more efficient with my time. And if you take real time to get low and acknowledge that he is God and you are not, that's as if you're humble. Humility often looks like prayer. A humble heart moves God's heart. An honest heart moves his heart. We get before the Lord and you just get honest, you get real. Several times in the Psalms, David says, I cried out to the Lord and he heard me. <laughs> I cried out to God, I got honest, I got real with what's really going on in my life. God, here's what's hard, here's what's difficult, here's what I've been up to. It's where you get honest with the doctor. You ever try to lie to a doctor? It's like, how you been eating? And you're like, well, you know. you know. It's where you get honest with your doctor. You're like, hey doc, I haven't been taking care of myself. And this is going on and this hurts over here and I need your help. You have to be willing to tell the doctor what is wrong if you want the doctor to make it right. For some of us today to get honest before the Lord and worship and say, God, this is what's hard. This is what's been difficult. I wanna be honest. I wanna be real. An honest heart moves his heart. A repentant heart moves his heart. This is where you don't just get honest about sin. You say, I wanna remove the sin from my life. I don't wanna just confess it. God, would you rip it out of my life? It doesn't belong here. That's what David says, Psalm 139, search me and know my heart. If there's something in here that doesn't please you, would you take it out? I don't want it anymore. I don't wanna be in love with it. That's what he says, Psalm 66. David says, if I cherish sin in my heart, the Lord doesn't hear my prayers. Sometimes the biggest blockage from God answering prayers, we're just still in love with that sin in our life. And repentant heart says, God, I want you to take it out. It's saying today that there might, there might've been a sin in 2023, it doesn't belong in 2024. Would you reveal it today, God? I wanna give it to you. A repentant heart moves his heart. And finally, a hungry heart moves his heart. A hungry heart. And what's one of the best ways we can produce a hungry heart for God in our life? It's this thing called fasting. And so tomorrow we're gonna to invite you, our whole church, into a week of fasting a time to come before the Lord and to move his heart. In fact, we're gonna put out um, something on social media every single day, guided prayers, um, different direction that can come with that. Um, that we're gonna make in our game plan, which is our daily devotional we make every week based on the sermon. It's gonna be devotions based on fasting. If you wanna jump into that, if you're interested, we'd love to invite you to jump into that with us. And, and again, why are we doing that? Because we wanna move his heart. If he turns around and moves his hands and blesses you because he's that good, that's great, but that's not why we're doing it. I'm not fasting to say, God, I'm fasting, and here's what I expect at the end. No, God, I, I just want you, you know? <laughs> I wanna move your heart. What is fasting? Fasting is the deliberate abstinence from some form of physical gratification for some period of time to achieve a higher spiritual goal. And I'm gonna say that again, because that was a lot of words. Um, fasting is the deliberate abstinence, meaning I'm choosing to abstain from some form of physical gratification. Most commonly, it's food. So we see the most in scripture. Um, that's the hardest one, by the way. Some people will be like, no, that one's not hard. I'm gonna fast going to the gym. I'm like, great, I'm gonna join you in that. I'm four weeks into that one. You know what I mean? It's called holidays. You're like, you do holidays for four weeks? We take it very seriously in our family. Anyway, food is the hardest one. And it's between you and the Lord, right? It could be social media, it could be TV. It's some form of physical gratification. For some period of time, we're gonna do seven days right, from Monday all the way to next Sunday to do what? To achieve a higher spiritual goal, moving the heart of God, right? Zechariah 7 says, we eat for ourselves, but we fast for God. <laughs> we fast to get closer to God. We, fa we fast to have the, that Holy Spirit be more alive and aware in our lives, just like we sang about a minute ago, right? Fasting in our culture is about losing weight. Fasting spiritually is about gaining weight spiritually, gaining the presence of God that becomes so thick in your life, it changes you. <laughs> It changes you because now you're hungry for him. Your hunger has changed. And that's what fasting is. It's a reallocation of your hunger. As humans, we long for things. We crave things. And I think what you crave says a lot about you. I'll say it like this. Your cravings reveal the quality of your soul. When you lay in bed at night and you dream about stuff, what are you dreaming about? What are you longing for in life? If we're being honest, I think sometimes we long for what's mediocre in life. We long for a pay raise at work. We long for a nicer car. You were made to long to see God do something only God could do. 
Long to see God heal the sick, to save the lost, to speak something to you from heaven that could only come from heaven, that you need to hear today. We should long for that. And so often we're longing for the wrong thing. That's where a lot of our pain and frustration in life comes. We have the wrong craving. I'm reaching for the wrong thing in life. It's not really gonna fill me, right? The more you long for him, the less you'll long for things that are less than him. The more he takes up your appetite, the less you're really longing and wanting things that aren't really gonna fill your soul. And so fasting helps with that, right? Fasting builds my hunger for God, which is important as we head into a new year, right? And my prayer in this season is that our church, we would gain a hunger for God we've never had before. (laughs) That our appetite for heaven would literally pull heaven down here. Because that's what fasting is. Fasting is saying, God, I need heaven more than I need earth. And to show you that that's true and to prove to myself that that's true, I'm gonna take this thing on earth and I'm gonna lay it down so that I can bring heaven down to earth. Because I want you (laughs) and I'm hungry for you and I just wanna move your hearts. I believe in this season, God is giving grace to the hungry. I was reading a verse this morning, Luke chapter one, verse 52. Jesus says, I give grace to the hungry, but I send the rich away empty. And I don't think that's a verse that's showing God's distaste for the rich. I think it's a verse that's showing God's distaste for those who become satisfied with the wealth of this world and have not remained hungry for him. David says in the Psalms, he says, I'm poor, I have nothing. And and when he says that, he's actually rich and has everything in this world. What he's saying is, I need more of you. I have everything in this life. That's not what I'm here for. I'm hungry for you. I just wanna move your heart. And so we're gonna go into a song right now, it's called Move Your Heart. Yeah, I requested it because I knew what I was talking about today, but um, and I would pray that you would think about that. God, this year is not just about moving your hands, I wanna move your heart. How can I do that? How can I love you? How can I value you? How can I have an appetite for heaven and for you? God, I just want to move your heart. Would you stand with me as I go back into prayer? before we sing this song. God, I just pray that in this moment, would you show us what it looks like to move your heart this year? That I don't want your stuff, I want you. I wanna move you because I love you. I want intimacy with you, God. So show us how to move your heart. Would we just declare it right now in our life that you're worth it. Whatever thing I gotta lay down, whatever thing I gotta do, you're worth it. If I gotta get uncomfortable right now in worship, you're worth it. I gotta give up this thing that I really like. You're worth it. I wanna move your heart because I love you and I'm in love with you. God, grow our hunger for heaven, grow our hunger for you. There's so many things that attract our attention and our eyes and our heart and our cravings. Would we give you our appetite today? Would we have a hunger to move your heart? We say we love you, God, you're worth it. We worship you now in Jesus' name.